Tell them up. Okay, so we, we left off on, uh, we, we spoke about Isaiah 60, and, and Isaiah 60 speaking about uh, their gates being open continuously and bringing the forces of the Gentiles. Um, and then we went to, uh, we paired that with, we, we, were spoke, we spoke about how that's actually talking about them uh, submitting unto righteousness. That's submitting unto righteousness. And, uh, and we paired that with Micah 4 and 2. We talked about how they're going to come and learn of, of righteousness, and learn of the ways of, of the Heavenly Father through those that are supposed to be the representation of righteousness. The Most High has set up, whoever they may be. Um, and then we're pairing that right now with, with Tobit 4 and 21. It's uh, Tobit 4 and 21. And fear not, my son, that we are made poor, but thou hast much wealth. If thou fear Yahweh, thou shalt be our son, and depart from all sin, and do that which is well pleasing in his sight. Right, so that's real wealth. That's real true wealth. Not actual money. This is wealth, man. Departing from evil, departing from wickedness, and continuing to live a righteous lifestyle, and lending to people in righteousness. And, and, and the scriptures is speaking about how he's he not going to hide his face from us no more. He's going to have his eyes continually upon us. And the only thing that the, the eyes of the Lord can continually, you know, continually look upon is righteousness. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the, and the operation of it. So this is what the, the Heavenly Father will be comfortable to look at. You know what I'm saying? It's nice uh, operating with their righteousness amongst our neighbors. You know, and us instilling the ways of righteousness into our neighbors. That's something that the Heavenly Father can look upon and find where it pleases. You know, because to forsake, forsake, uh, forsake unrighteousness is appropriation with Yahweh by Shemel Shah. You know, so for these people to be for, forsaken unrighteousness and turn away from unrighteousness and us to be leading others to righteousness, this is something that's well pleasing with the Heavenly Father. And it's something also they can look upon. It says the eyes of the Lord are continually upon the righteous. What's being shown right here in Tobit is turning others to a righteous lifestyle and helping to mold them, those that are in a heathenistic state of mind, mold, molding them uh, to become neighbors in the spirit of our Lord is where our riches lie. That's right, 20, 29 and 11. It's rock, chapter 29 and verse 11. Lay up thy treasure according to the commandments of the Most High, and it shall bring thee more profit than gold. Yeah, lay up your treasures uh, according to the commandment of the Most High, and it shall bring thee more profit than gold. Right. So if you mold people into righteousness, it'll be more profitable to you than just taking profit from them. You know what I mean? Um, Daniel uh, 2 and 30. <laughs> God, uh, oh, so it's kind of it's, 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 oh, it's, it's a lot of no yeah. This is it, Daniel 2 and 38. It's Daniel chapter 2 and verse 38. And wheresoever the children of man dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven have he given into thine hand. And have made thee ruler over them all, thou art this head of gold. Right, so it shows you right there that a heathen could be likened unto a head of gold. It says they will bring their forces, they'll bring their their gold, silver, right? So a heathen can be likened unto a, a, a likened unto gold. Well, I will make uh, I will make a man uh, more precious than fine gold. Uh uh as the finding pot is for silver, so is a man to his praise. You know? Yeah. So a man can be likened unto gold. Yeah, by way of refining. Uh, uh, right. So the heathen, this heathen kingdom was like was likened unto gold, and others were described as silver, which was another heathen empire in this in this scripture, this particular scripture. Because if you go down, it speaks about how another kingdom would be silver, and then there's other other metals, yeah, uh, precious metals. So when it, when it's we're bringing these points out to say that the forces in Isaiah 60 that they bring right. it is not gold and silk or actual money. Right, exactly. Yeah. That is that's exactly. Well, I hope they understood that. Yeah, God, yeah, God. You know what I'm saying? But, it, but I, I, I hope not. Yeah, God. Right, that's the reason we're bringing this point out. It's because you can't get literal with the gold, you know, when it speaks about silver and gold. 
you gotta know scripture to know like, oh, he was being described as gold and this one was being described as silver. Two and thirty-two. It says the image's head was of fine gold, and the breast of his arms is silver. Oh yeah. His belly and his thighs is brass. So, you know, so the uh, there was that, these kingdoms were likened unto precious oh, metals. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and in uh, Isaiah, I mix a lot of people in Isaiah sixty. It talks about how they're gonna bring brass. Hold on. I got you. This, this is what this talking about right here. Jumping down to Isaiah 60 to verse 17. For brass, I will bring gold. And for iron, I will bring silver. And for wood, brass. And for stones, iron. I will also make thy officers peace and thine extractors righteousness. Also, and our officers are going to be peace, man. So the officers that's going to be uh, securing or, you know, uh, Pretty much the bouncers for the kingdom of heaven, they're gonna be extracting peace, man. <laughs> they're gonna be extracting righteousness. That's, that's a beautiful word they use. That's a beautiful word that they use, extractors, because usually when you're when you're uh, mining for gold, you have to extract it. You're mining for silver, mining for precious metals, you're extracting these things. Yep. So you have to dissolve the impurities uh, away from you. Know? Right. Which this is this is trading is. That's what right. you're doing when you're trading. Right. Right. So so uh, so Isaiah, so in Isaiah 60, when it's saying bring silver, or bring, it's, it's saying bring, they're bringing themselves. Once again, the gold and the silver is not minerals you're, that you're going to be receiving. It's their energy, their productivity. You know, so it's energy, productivity. And that energy and productivity, the only way you can be pro productive is if you labor in righteousness. That's the ultimate productivity. You know, so you're teaching individuals to labor and righteousness and do the work and, and, and be able to be enthusiastic and have this, this zeal and the order to continue forth in the work right so this is the lending system so yeah yeah <laughs> so this 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 there receive forces from the Gentile, their their product their productivity and their energy is going to increase in within righteousness. Right. Right. This uh Proverbs twenty nine. You have nothing more productive, more profitable in your life. That's what the scripture tells oh, yeah. you. So how do we know what the ultimate productivity is? You know, you can't have anything more profitable in your life than wisdom and righteousness. You know, so you, anything other than that makes you unprofitable. You're an unprofitable person. <laughs> this Proverbs 29 and 14. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. Right, the king that, that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. So this is what establishes the throne of a king. Brother went into this precept, you know, before. So this is what establishes a king. When you uh, when you judge the poor, when you judge, we're going to be judging the poor, those that are faithful. destitute. Right, those that are destitute of, of, of wisdom. Uh -huh. We're going to judge them faithfully. And make sure that they are uh, fine tuned and and, that, and that's why Zion is going to be established forever. That's why the government uh, is going to be uh, established. The gov government of Israel is going to be established forever. That's why Mount Zion is going to be uh, unmovable, you know, because uh, they're going to faithfully be judging the poor. You know? They're going to be faithfully operating within the uh, within the facets of the heavenly bodies. No, that was not a Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 12. The Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, shall open unto thee his good treasure. We say, lay up thy treasure according to the commandments of the Most High. Uh-huh. It says, so, so the, the, the good treasure being opened up is the commandments of the Most High being opened up. Being right. made openly accessible to others. Yeah. Right. The Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, shall open up unto thee his good treasure. The heavens will give thee the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Right, right. And this goes into another point we made about waiting to, uh, you know, waiting to love, or waiting to till before reason of the rain, or for reason of the cold, or for reason of, you know, you're observing bad things, which makes it so that you don't pour into people. 
and they have refused to win because of other men still doing it. Yeah. So, uh, that was, yeah, that was the one. Deuteronomy 28 and 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. There it is. Thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. So we understand if you're lending to many nations, it's not talking about giving abundance of material gain. It's not talking about giving an abundance of material gain or getting an abundance of material gain. It's talking about giving intangible resources to those that are unevangelized. I'll just say that people that are uh, uh, that are not of the stock of whatever, and giving those intangible resources to those people. And it's talking about lending in this verse. And this goes into joint being joined unto, like we broke down earlier. This is talking about being joined unto. What's going on, bro? How you doing, bro? This Proverbs 19 and 17. He that have pity upon the poor. Lend up unto the Lord, Yahweh Shemash, and that which he have given will he pay him again. Right. Right. So he that lendeth them un unto the poor. Like this Proverbs 19 and 17. He that have pity upon the poor, lend up unto the Lord. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. So you have to have pity upon the poor. We talked about people that are like. We're talking about uh, you know, having pity upon the poor. You know what I mean? So um, and I know a lot of people, when you think about that, yeah, so, okay. so pity upon the poor, so you have to have pity upon the poor. We know the poor are uh, those that are destitute of, of, of righteousness. Those that are destitute of wisdom, they are the poor. You know, you know, it's not just talking about the poor of our people. You know what I'm saying? The poor of... Well, you're not going to be poor no more at that point. Yeah, exactly. We're, 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 talk, we're talking about prophecy, man. Right. You know, since they don't talk, since we don't talk about yeah. prophecy. Yeah, we're talking about prophecy right. right now. Yep. Yep. You ain't going to be poor then. So you ain't got to lend unto your people. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. and, 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 so if it's saying he that have pity upon the poor, lends to the Lord, joins himself to the Lord, mm -hmm. cleaves unto the Lord, that means that the Heavenly Father is all about showing pity to the poor, and in order for you to be a representative of the Heavenly Father, you have to be all about showing pity unto the poor. And at that point in the kingdom of heaven, hey, your people are not going to be poor no more. That's right. You know? That's right. So the only people that's going to be left that's poor without the wisdom is those nations that's outside the stock of Abraham because they're not going to have the law on their human part. So who are you going to be being pitiful to? You're going to show pity unto your, unto your servant, which is going to be the poor. If he's your servant, because he's the poor. He's a poor, he's a poor man. Rich men are your servants. Well, if you can't understand this and you're not doing it now, you're not going to be doing it then. <laughs> you know, that's the whole point. That's why you don't understand. Right. This is Matthew chapter 18 and 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall press trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee two, one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if you neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man in a public. Right, so that's another important thing we got to understand. A heathen man, 
you know, or like our people, we call them Republican or heathen, man. He was using these things interchangeably. And this, this, uh, this is an important point because our people that are heathen, they can become heathen men, but there's also those that are out that are unevangelized. I'll just use that as a, uh, as a, uh, as a, as a word that's interchangeable in this conversation. The unevangelized are the heathen. So the un unevangelized can be like the heathen of our people. I got two points on this. What makes you a heathen is to be alienated, uh, alienated with the vanity and darkness uh, yeah, and, uh, through the vanity of your own mind. That's what makes you a heathen. And also, heathen is synonymous with a heretic, an unbeliever, or an infidel. So if you're an infidel, you're a heathen. If you're an unbeliever, you're a heathen. If you're a pagan, you're a heathen. You know? If you're an unbeliever, you're a heathen. If you're a heretic, you're a heathen. It's all the same thing. Let's just prove it real quick. How you going to We're just gonna prove the point that uh first round first round is twenty. In Galatians they come actually come in Galatians they actually called our people he I can get that one too, but I know you got I know what they're doing. It's like twenty nine and fourteen. That's like Jesus like uh this is first chronicles twenty nine and fourteen, but who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given, have own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers, our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. Right? So if you're a sojourner, or excuse me, if you're a, a, a stranger before the Lord, that means that you're, uh, you're, you're, you might as well be of heathen stock. You're, you're, you're not you're not special you know what I'm saying so I, I went there so I, I went there basically to prove that we can be heathen as well according to the scriptures it's Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8. I started 7. No, because just so we know who we're talking to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I should have went here in First Chronicles as well, just to show. that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham and the scripture foreseeing that Yahweh by Shemuel Shah would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying and these shall all nations be blessed all right so we're called heathen right there too no, no, no. right so, so you can be a heathen before the Lord and it doesn't matter if you're of, if you're of uh, the stock of Abraham yeah if you just said you're going to be justified through the faith of Abraham that's yeah. all that matters so if someone suffer the same thing, and I was, I was telling this brother this too, this is a wicked thing, man. To tell a heathen if they're operating in righteousness is, is to no avail. avail. You you should go do wickedness, go shoot up heroin. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Go uh, do drugs. Yeah, go. You're gonna, you you gonna have some, some explaining to do. <laughs> yeah, to Yahweh, man. You are telling people to giving people a license to do wrong. Yeah, like, yeah, Yahweh. Because they're nothing. You're right. according to what your mind yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, that's not it, man. That's a very wicked thing, man. We're, we're supposed to always be representatives of righteousness. Okay. So we still, okay. So that was showing you that. So Matthew 18 through 50, uh, Matthew 18, 15 through 17 talks about the heathen man, which is your actual brother. Which it shows you how to conduct yourself with someone with that's a, yeah, or yeah, or someone who opposes righteousness. Yeah, right. So it's giving it's giving you right exactly spot on. Yeah. It's giving you a, a insight as to how to uh, deal with people that are uh, that are contrary to the to righteousness. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So rock on three. Wow, bro.
if thou have a servant, let him be unto thee as thyself, because thou hast bought him with a price. Right, so if you have a servant, uh -huh. let him be unto you as yourself, which so, means he's like a heathen, it's like, treat him like you. So the, the heathens is going to become the Hawashai's men's possession, because <laughs> Mind you, it says, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, which is talking to your house, Which means it's his stuff. Yeah, kind of. do what you want to do. Right, so, if you are one of those men that represent your house, come in his stead, and you have been given, uh, you have been made uh, ruler over his, uh, over his things, over, over his possessions, you know, then you're going to have to treat his possessions as brothers. Just letting you know right now. So, if you got service thinking you finna just go do what you wanna do with them just just cause you receive services, even service, you can't. Like it just said it. Huh? It just said it. I'll read one time for you sometime. This is right 33 and 30. It says, if thou have a servant, let him be unto thee as thyself, because thou hast bought him with a price. If thou have a servant, and treat him as a brother. <laughs> mm, treat him as a brother. What? It said treat him as a brother. <laughs> treat him as a brother. Same thing we just read in Matthew 18. Right. So we just go. So we're not making this stuff up when we say when we were saying that. Uh, um, yeah, Matthew 18 when it's talking about treating people like a brother, it's giving you insight as to how to treat <laughs> the people that are operating contrary to the spirit of the Lord. Yeah. Whether it be people of the stock of Abraham. Or whether it be a servant. If, if you win, if you win them over, then you gain the brother, man. Right. You you help propel them towards the faith of Abraham. You have gained the brother. Mm -hmm. It says, "Treat services brothers." Man. God, huh? it says, "If thou have a servant, and treat him as a brother, for thou hast need of him, as of thine own soul." That's right. If thou entreat him evil, and he run from thee, which way will thou go to seek him? Right. This is the lending system we're talking about. You, you do for me, I do one hand washes the bought other. With a price, yo. Bought him with a price, you, know. you bought him, and it's gonna be able to get a return on it. Uh -huh. And y'all both treating each other. It's a it's a symbiotic relationship. Oh, I don't want to. You know what I'm saying? It's mutual. It's like it's a mutual relationship. Uh -huh. This this Proverbs 21 and 18. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the transgressor for the upright. Uh, so the transgressor is the ransom for the upright. The, the wicked is the ransom for the righteous. So that means that the wicked and the transgressor is needed for the righteous to be able to uh, uphold righteousness and also put forth righteousness into others and, and propel others to righteousness. Uh, yeah, you're not doing nothing else in the kingdom, man. They, they always talk about, yeah, we ain't gonna have no jobs in the kingdom. Yeah, because your job is gonna be to be a servant. You're, just, you're gonna be doing what you're naturally supposed to be Your vocation. Your vocation is gonna be your whole, what your whole behavior and conduct is gonna be, and thinking is gonna be predicated on. And that's what's supposed to bring you joy, too. A lot of people hear that, they start frowning up. That means that they, they're not really happy about what the Lord is uh, giving us that's uh, for reward, man. Which is the crown of life, man. They talk about in uh, Sirach 1 and 18 how the fear of God is a crown, you know? How, how walking in righteousness is a crown. Oh, you want to choice? Oh, yeah, it was a little bit more. Okay, I'm, we're going to jump back to uh, Sirach 33 and jump into 24. Father, a wine and burdens are for the ass and bread, correction, and work for a servant. If thou sit with bread, correction, work, right. Right. Jesus, all right. Right. So bread, to right, so bread, uh, bread is not just going going into like actual bread. It's going to the, the bread of adversity. Uh, this is going into uh, what actually sustains a person. Right, and it's, it, it's, it says a father, a wine and burdens is for asses, man, not for people. Right, right. <laughs> what the? Right. That's, that's right. barbaric, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you fathers and wands and burdens are not for servants, man. Those are for asses, man. Donkeys. Which, mind you, it told you that donkeys are smarter than our people in Isaiah the first chapter. Right, right. It says the asses know, know his own. Well, it just told you to treat them like yourself. So are you going to do that with your own self, too? God. It says, if thou set thy servant to labor, thou shalt find rest. But if thou let him go idle, 
He shall seek labor. Right, so you're setting your servant to labor, labor in righteousness. Right, man. God. You know what I'm saying? Not, not putting whips on his back and making him plow your fields. That's not what it's talking about. And when it's talking about idleness, it don't mean just letting him just go gad abroad and frolic and whatever he wants to do. You know, it's talking about letting him be uh, absent from uh, the ways of righteousness. Man. Right, right, exactly. That's letting him go idle, you know? So if you're, if you're not, if you're not, uh, get because it said he that was holding the corn, he, he that was holding the corn, you're like a murderer, man. Yeah. That's like withholding corn, you know. Right. So, like the ox, nah. it says, If thou set thy servant to labor, thou shalt find rest, but if thou let him go idle, he shall seek liberty. A yoke and a collar do bow the neck. So are tortures and torments for an evil servant. Right, so we're going to go into that too. The uh, tortures and torments for an evil servant. Uh, so it's not talking about just being the, the cruel overlord here. I know a lot of people get spun out of control mentally when they hear this type of, this type, this type of language. Uh, but this type of language is not speaking about that. So you got to treat the servant as yourself. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai bought us with a price. But you can't buy an Israelite according to uh, the law. But, you, but consider this, we are nothing before the Lord um, like everybody else. We are as strangers unto the Lord, like it points out in 1 Chronicles 29, 14 through 16. But if we get by of, of the heathen, we have to treat them like ourselves, as it states in Sirach. Also, uh, um, what are we going to grab first? What's that one? What's the one? Hi. Oh, we gotta get uh, we gotta bring down the torch first sir. Torch and turn this to the sir. So we gotta go talk about the torch and sir. So I think that's what Okay, so you wanna hear that part first? You wanna go here first? Okay, so that's what's gonna mention. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah, we can yeah, what, what's that what's that? Yeah, it all go together. Oh yeah, bro, yeah, we gotta do this part together. Yeah, okay. Let's go, let's go to that's the one we're about. Yeah. Okay, Psalms 149. Okay, this is Psalms 149. Forgive me. No, hold on. Slot, Doc. Let's do the other part. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. This is the last Okay, so we mentioned here that... Uh, so we just stopped. Torches. So we stopped in uh, Sirach 30, 33 and 26 talking about torches and torments. Right. Like, so we're lending in this way. Uh -huh. You lend in this way through tortures and torments, but not like you think. Yeah, kind of. Not kinda. like how you're thinking. Like, oh, we get to be sick and hurt people. That's all about this. Torches and torments. Jake like that. And verse 6, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Which is two-edged sword. It's not talking about a literal two-edged sword where you're going to be doing some great uh, Mortal Kombat techniques with, man. Right. A two-edged sword. Um, well, you know, in Revelation uh, 2 and 16, Yahweh Shah says, repent or else I shall come back and fight thee with the sword of my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Or in Revelation, the first chapter, it talks about how a two-edged sword proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh shot. You know, and the two-edged sword applies unto, um, applies unto, um, instituting righteousness and also uh, separating those who are uh, misappropriating righteousness. You know, so this is how a two-edged sword works. And also it applies on the ardor and zeal and, and, and glow and passion and fervency. You know, it's like a hot sword, you know, like Zamazu had in uh, Dragon Ball Z. If any of y'all brothers know about that, that's kind of like the sword that Yahweh Shah has, man. you know. So when we talk about a two-edged sword, we talk about things that incite people to, okay. uh, to be separated from uh, weakness, you know. And uh, also <laughs> cut away the things that's wicked within them to help propel them more towards righteousness. So, okay. So it says, so let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand 
to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Right, so, so and vengeance and punishments don't uh, uh, apply how most Jakes commonly think. You know, like personal vengeance. Yeah, kind. Uh, you know, we're, we're inflicting some, you know, some type of some type of punishment on somebody to hurt them in a way that you know that's not uh, about instituting some type of rights. Not just you getting off on your own kicks. Well, I tell you that he that uh, the Lord loves those who chastise. And chastise is synonymous with punishment. So if you get punished, you're, you're, someone loves you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's done from the, uh, from the lens of love. Right. And also when it says uh, uh, vengeance. Uh, Cause it say he that uh, he he that spared the rod from his children hates his children. Right. You know what I'm saying? So to to, to to spare your rod shows hate. So when it's talking about punishment and executing vengeance, firstly, first vengeance is the heavenly father. Secondly, punishment is chastisement, which shows is is an implication of love. Go ahead. says to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written this honor have all his saints right, right. right. so you can't, you can't imme immediately get carnal and start thinking that you're going to be breaking backs and whipping people with whips and, and putting people in, in, uh, in fetters of iron and things like that so right, so we because we're going to show what so what? Because these these things are not. It's not talking about literal. It's not literal. It's not literal, man. You know. Right. It's it's the rock twenty one and uh, it's the I see. It's the rock twenty one and nineteen. Doctrine unto fools is as fetters on their feet and like manacles on the right hand. You hear that? <laughs> one more time, God. It's, doctrine unto fools is as fetters on the feet and like manacles on the right hand. Right. So doctrine can be hard on you. Doctrine can be something that's being uh, is like you know to putting you in bonds. And doctrine is doctrine is one of those things that's like uh, what it's what's being described in Psalms 149. That's doctrine. That's not you. That's not you getting your cookies off. You know what I'm saying? Stop trying to spit it, man. And make it be, make it fit your own carnal uh, uh, agenda. And then it talks about freeing those who are bound. What to bound them to righteousness? Yep. What whatsoever is bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Right, right. So, so the doctrine's doing the beating. Right. The doctrine is doing the thing that's beating people right. up. Not you. I know you want to get in it. <laughs> Tag me in, spirit. <laughs> so, so <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> to you. Deadly brother spirit. I'm gonna get your lick. You're not getting it. Yeah, you ain't gonna get your lick back, man, the way you wanna get it. No, nah, no. Nah. Too late, man. No, man, it's over with, man. Let it go. And then, like me and this brother always talk about, you jakes be full of shit. All you want to do is get seven women holding one man, man. Yeah, that's and gold you... castles and cherries, man. You ain't even gonna keep that same energy when you get all that excess. Uh -huh. The scriptures scripture literally says it. Uh -huh. It says if in time of abundance, there's a forgiveness of oh, yeah, uh, yeah. But this means that once you're sitting high on the hog, uh -huh. or whatever, however you want to say it. Yeah. Then you're gonna have a forgetfulness of affliction, man. You're gonna forget your brothers yep. and what they went through. Yep. That wasn't me, that was all so many years ago. Yeah, man. It don't matter no more, man. Rodney King Spirit go <laughs> We go all just get along. <laughs> Think that you're gonna keep that same spirit, you're not. Most high no more than you. I believe him over you. Right. And then we know how to prove your Israelites without the curse. <laughs> we so we know your nature. This this is a rock 4 and 17. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment her him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her law. They're going to torment right there. They're going to torture. So we went into the what? In Sirach uh, 21 and 19. We went into tortures. Manacles. Yep. We went into the manacles and fetters. Now we're going into the tortures. Uh -huh. So you want to go into... You know, it's there. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you want to get? Yeah, like, do? don't, don't bring that stuff out. <laughs> right, leave it alone, man. It, it, it man applies more to righteousness than you think. Than you think. Yeah, you're thinking that these tortures and these tortures. You're lending to people through tortures. Yep. You're lending to people. Yep. You're borrowing through manacles. Well, you know what I'm saying? What's that What's that scripture in Proverbs? I can talk about. It might be like Proverbs 17. 
open concept. Wisdom, and wisdom, wisdom is tortures you. Executing vengeance is propelling you to righteousness. It helps you to bow down to bow down to a righteous lifestyle. Man. So wisdom is tortures. Executing vengeance is propelling you to righteousness. That's what it's talking about. Nothing else. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> we just joking. We just getting funny, man. Right. We're trying to make it look fun out because y'all dicks don't like nothing, man. <laughs> <laughs> trying to make it a little appealing for you. Right. Exactly. Where, where we at? We got some Oh, I just wanted to make it. It's not this thing. Bear with us one second. Ourselves as estates in Sarah. Uh -huh. 
it said it, they're, they're bought with the price. And we're going to, because we have bought them with the price. And it talks about how we have been bought with the price. With your house side, your house side don't just treat us any type of way. I'm just finished reading this rock 33. We did, remember we had we did 30. Third Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We didn't do over 30. Yeah, oh yeah, we didn't get to 30. Yeah, 27. This uh 27. Sirach 33 and 27. Send him to labor that he be not idle, for idleness teach of much evil. Send him to work as it's fit for him. If he be not obedient, put on more heavy fetters. Right, if he, if he doesn't be obedient, put on more heavy fetters, yes. Uh, basically, give, he needs some milk. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. It doesn't mean like be harder and beat him harder. Yeah, God. It just means, well, he needs to have more institutions. You need to institute more uh, uh, kind of like spiritual principles. Uh -huh. More forbearance. By, by long for, forbearance is a principle of persuading. Right, right. So you got to treat the servant as yourself. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, bought us with a price, but you can't buy up Israelites. Oh, like I oh, <laughs> like I we're ready to get, we're ready to get this part over. <laughs> All right, so I'm just ready to Send him to work as it fit for him. If he be not obedient, put on more head of fetters, heavy fetters. But be not excessive toward any, and without discretion do nothing. If thou have a servant, let him be unto thee as thyself, because thou hast bought him with a price. Excessive. Treat him like yourself, man. If the scriptures is plain, it's telling you what to do. You know? Uh we already proved in First Chronicles 29, 14 through 16, we can be like heathen. The brother for in Galatians as well. That we can be as heathen. You know what I'm saying? Unto the Lord. And it's talking about how we was bought with a price. So because we if we have a servant, we have bought him with a price, right? Oh no, we did it's a lot, God, man. Everywhere, it's a lot. It's a lot. This uh, Deuteronomy 27 and verse 19. Curse be he that perverted the judgment of the stranger, fatherless, and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Come. It says, Curse be he that perverted the judgment of the stranger, fatherless, and widow. And all the people shall say, Amen. This Deuteronomy 27 and 19. Cursed be he that perverted the judgment of the stranger, fatherless and widow. Right, so that's three. That's a trio right there. Three piece. What? The fatherless, the stranger, and the widow. And they all can be likened one to another because a heathen is fatherless and he's a widow because uh, the nations are wives unto the heavenly father. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And you can be fatherless. You can be uh, you can be fatherless or estranged from the Lord. You know what I mean? So it's exactly, they're exactly the same. You know what I mean? So, uh, This first Corinthians 7 and 22. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's free man. Likewise, also, he that is called being free is a Mashiach servant. They are bought with the price. Be not ye the servants of men. Right, be ye not the servants of men. Um, right, so you're bought with the price, but be ye not servants of men. So we are we were bought with the price as well. And you might think, like, how can uh how can that be bought? We were bought without the carnal things. It's, it talks about that in uh in first Peter. Yeah, first Peter 1 and 18, we weren't bought with gold. You know what I'm saying? So we were bought with a price, with a price, excuse me. But the Heavenly Father treats us as himself. Right, God. Uh, you know, he treats us as himself because we were like heathen unto him. So so how so how are we gonna get, do something different than the Heavenly Father and the Lord though? Yeah. No, we're not doing nothing, especially if we embody them or we exemplify what they stand for. You're not going to be doing nothing different than they do. Right. 
right? And another point, point, point in this, uh, matter of fact, the first Corinthians 6 and 20. What's the whole point when you do buy something? It's first Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. It says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Yahweh by Shem in your body and in your spirit, which are Yahweh by Shem Yahweh All right, so if you're bought with a price, this is what you're supposed to be doing. You're, spo you're supposed to ensure that God is being glorified. Is glorified. being glorified. Excuse me. That the Heavenly Father is being glorified. So even if you are considering buying something, the Heavenly Father has to be glorified. So, so is the Heavenly Father getting glory by you bashing on some people, being malicious toward them? He's not being glorified in that way. No. So um, he, the scriptures don't never say that's what glor that's what glorifies him, man. You know that's what he takes glory in, man. Right. This things are worthy. Of, it never talks about that. Right. It's being exactly. praised or what makes him worthy of glorification. Yeah, kind. Right. We already went into uh, the points in uh, Psalms 149 and 6 through 9, and Sirach 21 and 19, and Sirach 4 and 17. We talked about wisdom and tortures. We talked about the manacles. We talked about executing vengeance, which is propelling individuals to righteousness. We already went over all these points. We talked about treating even uh, 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 his brothers, brothers. Serve, service his brothers, right? You know how the heavenly Father also does it his, himself. I can see people smacking their legs, shaking their head. <laughs> so there's no way around it. Going but, like this. <laughs> Fake one ambassador is help. And guess what? If you don't get with it, you're not going to be one of these guys. Right. <laughs> you might as well get on one wheel. Yeah, get on board. Yeah. Go on board. Yeah. And lending is of the utmost importance to the Heavenly Father. This is an important thing to consider. And now that we have, we've established the lending system. We read it earlier, Proverbs 19 and 17. He that shows pity unto the Lord, who, uh, pity unto the poor, lends unto the Lord. Yeah. So it shows you that this is important unto him. You know? And that's the will of God that all uh, uh, walks in righteousness and in peace. It's Matthew 25. It's Matthew 25 and 14. into a far country who called his own service and delivered unto them his goods. Verse 15. <laughs> and unto one he give five talents, to another two, and to another one to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Right, so this is about flipping ability and getting reward, and, and, and the Heavenly Father rewards those that flip their ability that He's given you. You know what I mean? And, and that's what uh, we do when we lend it. We read it earlier because it applies unto ability, skill, logic. Right, exactly, you know? exactly. So that's ability. So, so, and I went into the word uh, talent uh -huh. and the online uh, etymology, and it means special natural ability, aptitude, gift committed to one for use and improvement or persons of ability, which is likened to spiritual money. Along with these riches and wealth comes spiritual power and spiritual influence. Oh, well, that's the real breakdown on a gift to store up the heart. Right, right, right. <laughs> A gift destroys the construct of a, a wickedness in your mind, a wicked yeah. mind. Yes, right, right. So a, gift, a spiritual yeah. gift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A gift can destroy your, yeah, can destroy you inwardly. Yeah, God, uh, yeah. It can destroy the uh, world fabric. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, God, I'm going to use those gifts. Yeah. Well, I'm going to use those gifts. 
prevail towards morality. Yeah. Because the gift of righteousness can destroy wicked war of fabric. Yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so ability in the blue letter, in the, in the blue letter when you go into ability, uh, that's an inherent power. <laughs> It goes into inherent power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. Yep. Or which is the law. We just been over the law. I see y'all about to be doing it down, so I gotta give it to y'all. Shut up. There you go. Y'all getting cheap out here today? Oh uh, man, you know, majority. Well, maybe on the net. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, majority of our viewers. Uh, are, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a war right now. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. out on the floor and he's shooting. Yeah, we know, we know it already. <laughs> All, right, All right, shout out to brother. All right, so, ability, ability is inherent power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature, which a person or thing exerts and puts forth. So moral power and excellence of soul. Wow. That's a that's ability. That's great. Right, so I just wanted to grab that. That's fire, no, that's fire, bro. So when you link perfectly on what we say. <laughs> right. So you have to consider these things when we talk about lending and borrowing. What are you lending and borrowing? You're lending ability, you're lending talents, and these abilities and these talents are for improvement of others. You know, this is about uh spiritual commerce, man. Leading to a world where well the prices is in peace. Really what they want is they want to have a, uh, a monopoly on violence. Yeah. They want to be able to institute violence whenever they want to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Under their rules. Yeah. That's really what it is. Yeah, like, we, don't kick, we can kick your ass and the Lord's going to be okay with you. Right. Because right. we be the righteousness of the people Heavenly Father. All right. So, sometimes, bro, the Heavenly Father don't always but add something comes at multitudes of forms. You know what I'm saying? So, some, the, the Heavenly Father don't always want you to whoop somebody with this. You know what I'm saying? I might want you to whip them in another way. So it can't always uh, uh, be uh, physical, physical to be able to uh, accomplish the will of the Heavenly Father. Man. This is uh, Sirach 29 and verse 7. Many therefore have refused to live for other man's ill dealing. Giving is of the utmost importance. We have to understand that the Heavenly Father loves a cheerful giver. <laughs> God, uh, yeah. He wants you to give. Yep. You know, you have to give, and then more importantly, he wants you to give of yourself. Yep. Not just throw resources at yeah, problems. Uh, yep. It's not uh, no, Right, exactly. Alms, it talks about alms, and when it talks about uh, charity, it's, it's not talking about money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Deuteronomy 15 and 7. We're just gonna establish that the Heavenly Father Loves give, giving. Giving is important. <laughs> Take a like this shit, bro. It's like giving. <laughs> what are y'all talking about? It's, it's, well, y'all, what y'all say is better to give than receive. Right. You literally, y'all, what y'all literally say is. Right. Listen. <laughs> Thank the Lord, bro. Yeah. You may give like give this. Ask him. Bring your foot on. <laughs> it's Deuteronomy 15 and 7. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any 
of thy gates in thy land, which the, which the Lord thy power giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thine heart, nor set thy hand from thy poor brother. That's another thing too, it's like, go back to what we were talking about earlier, Yahweh, Yahweh Shia's first dibs on everything. What, what you're giving is not yours to give anyway, man. So if right. you try to like refuse it or hold it back, that's like holding back my sheep, man. Freely you have been given, really yeah. give. Yeah, kind of. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and then on top of that, it's like uh, the Heavenly Father, he wants you to, uh, he gives it to, uh, uh, to every man according to the measure of faith. Uh -huh. So it's like, you're giving according to what's been given you already, so it's not yours. Right. It says, but thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him, and shall surely lend him sufficient for his need, and that which he wanted. But where that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart, saying, the seventh year, the set the year of release is at hand, and thy eye be evil against thy poor brother, and thou givest him not, and he cry unto the Lord against thee, and it be sin unto thee. Right now, we can see that this can this can be pointed. This can be used for heathen as well. You know what I'm saying? This can be used as heathen. We don't got a further understanding of this. I hope you understand at least. This can be used and directed to a heathen as well. Well, uh, and then you can be like, what well, the scriptures say? We can lend with usury to the heathen. What well, to lend with usury means uh to uh bite, to bite or uh be stung as like stung of a serpent. And if you talk about flee sin because it's uh it's things like a serpent does. You know what I'm saying? So landing with you is pretty much sin. <laughs> that, that goes back to what we were talking about, like the law. You can't just read it at face value. You'll you you get you get your ass tricked up in something, man. You know? You like always oh, so we can lend to the you uh to the heathen. Was usually and then you do that and then your ass done walked in the sea now. Right, you know. Right. Six and thirty. But you gotta, you gotta remember that thou too were a stranger in Egypt. <laughs> so you do that stuff, but you gotta realize the Heavenly Father, like man, all right, now you remember he's a stranger in Egypt. You want, how you want him in the church? This Luke 6 and 30. Give to every man that acts of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And how was I was talking about uh, the goods, you know, we left with his goods. Oh, there I go again. Yeah, yeah. No, I can go there. He said, do this with my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, who was made ruled over his goods. 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, and shake it together, and run up over. Shall man give unto your bosom? For with the same measure that they met with them, it shall be measured to you again. Ah, so that's why... Uh, that's why it's important to lend and give because you're going to be giving to those that are poor and it's going to come back to you double like we were just about we were explaining earlier you know what i'm saying like that that giving is going to come back to, and uh manifold to, you know what i'm saying you're going to get great gain by giving it right you know first john 3 and 17. But whoso have this world's good and see if his brother have need and set him up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Same right. thing in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. We don't have this world's good and we see other people are in need of instruction to, to lead them to good and we're going to be like, nah. Yeah. You know, but say we serve, say we're representatives of God. No, we're not. No. Heretic. That's heretic talk. Heresy. Luke 
19 and 22. Now when Yahweh son heard, now when Yahweh son heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sorry. Sorry. young man in Matthew 19 who was uh who came to the Lord uh, who, who was very sorrowful when the Lord told him that he got to sell all that he had. It's a uh, Luke 18 and 22. Now when Yahweh shot heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Right, so lend, lending, this is that same lending system that we spoke about before. Same lending system that applies to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because ultimately, this lending system is going to be happening in the kingdom of heaven, whether you like it or not. Proverbs 19 and 17. To winnowing. Winnowing goes into to find and identify a valuable or useful part of something uh, to remove chaff from. And this is what treading is. So when they talk about treading upon the wicked, it's talking about winnowing, which which means to uh, winnowing is to winnowing is to find the the why, like treading the wide bridge. Find or identify the valuable or useful part of something. Yeah, the wine. Yep. Come ye to the wine, the waters. The same thing, man. It's like finding the the, 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 the valuable, the, the thing that's uh, that can make for productivity, get a good in something. 
So when it's talking about, talk about your house shot trading upon the wine press, or when it's talking about trading upon the wiki, you know what I'm saying? It's talking about uh, the winnow, which is uh, taking away the shaft from the grain. That's also what stubble means the Obadiah. You know, and Obadiah 118, when it talks about Esau should be a stubble, that word stubble is, uh, goes in the shaft. Which, uh, so when Jacob, Joseph and Jacob being a flame and a fire, and making Esau stubble means you're gonna be winnowing them. Right. You know, that's what it means in that in that verse. It goes that that's talking about winnowing, shredding. You know, they're, they're gonna be made stubble. They're gonna be made as chaff as the grain, which means they're gonna be able to we're gonna be able to push away, blow away as wind, be a destroying wind unto uh unto uh false false facts of wisdom. It's okay. All right. Oh, I'm still in it. <laughs> That's what, so that's what tre treading is winnowing, winnowing, man. When, when they talk about Esau gonna be made stubble, they're gonna be made chaff from the grain. You know, which means they're gonna be separated from the grain, which means they're gonna have impurities or things that's wicked or even uh, more within them separated from them. By who? Thank you. Receiving of, 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 of yes, gold yeah. and gifts. That's not going to justify you. Yeah. you You're not going to bring forth the redemption of another to walk in righteousness through by them giving you gifts. Yeah, yeah, huh? Yeah, by receiving their gifts. Well, they, they don't even be caring about that shit, huh? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he is like, the Arabs and the Indians. Okay. They be having jewelry store. They don't even have not one jewelry. One thing on. Farming on with a whole jewelry. Yeah, the good case, huh? They don't, they, they don't even be wearing that one. Like, they don't even be wearing uh, that stuff, Bob. Right. You know? Like, uh, all them heathen uh, designers, like Mark Jacob, Tom Ford, and all that stuff. You look at them, they don't even got the designer stuff on, man. You know? So, them heathen, they, they, they don't even care about that stuff, man. That's not holding them back from doing wick, uh, any wickedness, you know? Right. So them taking us taking away from them is not gonna help further them in righteousness in any way because they don't even care about that stuff anyway. Right. You weren't redeemed with gold. Gold is not a, a means of of, uh, of bartering, man. Yeah. That's not that's not the system. Uh, you know. So it's just as sure as you were not redeemed with it, that's not gonna be uh, uh, just the, the gold standard. is not gonna be a thing. <laughs> gold standard. God, so uh, righteousness is the standard. So uh, lending to the poor, lending to the poor represents those who are destitute of wisdom. We have to be willing to lend good discretion, be very tolerant and lenient, understanding and compassionate, keen and meek, 
throughout various circumstances, this can be very taxing on someone, so and, he and weigh heavy on you. Heavy on, uh, weighing heavy on you, and this goes into another's uh, burden, which is what lending is all about. Also, if you are pitiful and merciful towards the poor, you are joining yourself unto the Lord and taking up His principles. Psalms 37 and 26. Right, that's crazy. Not we we just read. Yeah, we just read that part and then we got to jump. Yes, uh, so. This is uh, Psalms 37 and 26. He is ever merciful and lender. We're talking about Yahweh. And his seed is blessed. Yeah, those who are ever merciful and lender. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's the seed of your house. Right, what else? I, I don't think I need to say that. Yeah, God, I, brother just said it. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Luke 6 and 30. Luke 6 and 30. No, it's all good. It's all right. Luke 6 and 30. Because you can't make your own lending up, right. you know. So this this how the Heavenly Father is merciful and lends forever. And this is how you're going to be merciful and lend forever. Be a part of the seed that's merciful and always lending like the Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. It says, and if they, if they lend to them of whom they hope to receive, what thank have they? For sinners also lend, also lend to sinners to receive as much again. Right. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he's kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. And there's the that's super point right here. Yeah, that's, that's the super is, point. So the most, the most high will lend, most will lend only to those that they feel safe uh, lending to because in hopes of getting a return right. from lending, yep. you know. And they feel more secure in the fact of recompense based on the established relationship. Right. Our Lord Yahweh Shai specifically tells us uh, what you mu how you must lend and, and how you must borrow. And how we do this is give a, uh, give to those whom we, we don't seem would be worthy or unworthy of us giving that gift to them. Those who are adversarial in nature and spirit to what spirit we are in. This is true judgment. This is about influencing the course and conduct of others on the, on the highest level and being the biggest example. And this is what it means when we talk about the Lord loving judgment. Yes, that's, what, that's what he loves. First Peter 2.15. For so is the will of Yahweh Bashim al Shad. Oh, this is the will of Yahweh Bashim al Shad. That with well doing they may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Right, so you put the, to silence the ignorance of foolish men who lending and doing, and doing well. That's how you make them. And that's how you make them no longer foolish. Yep. It says you were once foolish. Yeah, uh huh. So this makes it so that you're not foolish anymore. Yep. You put this to silence. The, the ignorance of foolish men. By well doing, not by whooping their ass with rods. Right, right. Which the rod, the rod applies unto correction. Right. Because it says a rod was made for an ass. The, the correction was made for a certain. Right. The rod of correction. Galatians 6 and 9. Galatians 6 and 9. Right. How are you doing, brother? Right. Alright, man, you too. It's 
Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be wary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So this shows how many uh, many will be weary in lending. Many will, weary, will be weary in lending. After a while of too much lending uh, and no recompense causes people to grow weary. <laughs> That's why they're not the children of God. Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, the, the children of God don't get uh, weary in lending because they're not hoping for nothing. If you're lending and hoping for something, then it's a good chance you're not one of the three classes of, of men that applies unto rights. provision for the people Woo! so also you can hunt for by buying and selling and lending and borrowing the Psalms uh, 132 and that's what you're doing when you are uh, fishing so it's so, so fishing applies unto hunting except for hunting it's, instead of uh, showing where to go get the food as, as a hunter you can get the food right? you know what I'm saying as a fisher you gotta wait on the food so true. Out there to get the food as a hunter you, 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 you ain't gotta wait on nothing, you got it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so what's up with that? One thirty-two and fifteen. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Oh, so let me start at fourteen. I'm gonna start at thirteen. 
this, this Psalms 132 and 13. For the Lord have chosen Zion, he have desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. So Zion uh, is basically those who are going to provide provision for the Heavenly Father. I'll tell you in verse 15. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. So we know what provision is. Provision is to provide or uh, or to make a... Uh make provisions for somebody is to help them, uh -huh. give to them. Which we're all supposed to make no provisions for the flesh. flesh. Yeah, God. Right. God. Right. Yeah, you don't make provision for fleshly nature, but you can make provisions for righteousness. Uh -huh. But on the Lord, yeah, how was I my Right, exactly. Joshua 9 and 14 and 15. This, uh, this, go no. This, this Joshua 9 and 14. And the man took of their victuals and asked not at the council, and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live, and the princes of the congregation swore unto them. Right, so this is a, this uh, particular account was when they uh they made We're a league. Good, That's okay, but I'm not gonna appreciate it. So this is the, this is an account where Joshua made uh, a league with those that seemed like they were long journeyers, but they were actually adversaries of them. Right. Um, so this provision is counsel. Yeah. So yeah, it shows you that provision right here. Uh, he acts not of uh, provision, counsel. So provision was likened unto uh, counsel. You know, it's that he he was acting. He, he took actual provision over the true provision, right. which shows that as hunters, what we're going to be providing is counsel of the Heavenly Father. You know, just to further elaborate on what you're going to be doing as a hunter when you're providing food, because I have seen, esteemed this word, word more than my necessary bread. So word can be likened unto food and bread. And bread was uh, was one of the things that's eaten before service. Bread correction and uh, what was the other one? So, so bread can be likened unto counsel or the word of the Heavenly Father. So uh, what we're going to be as, as hunters, hunting people, uh, hunting for people to have provision to walk with in righteousness. Uh, oh yeah, this, this one right here to prove that uh, the bread that we're going to be providing with them, providing the heathen with is the counsel of the Lord. Joshua uh, didn't provide them with the counsel of the Lord instead took action and provision, you know, instead of taking the provision, which is the counsel of the Lord. And that's what caused me to do this, you know. This is uh, Job 23. <laughs>
Oh, it's 12. My fault. My fault. I got it. It's 312. One Versa. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. No, it's this Job 23 and 12 Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips I have esteemed the words of his mouth More than my necessary food So That's Providing provision right. So, right, so, right So Joshua didn't esteem the words of the Lord More than his necessary bread Which was his, which is his true provision uh -huh. um, And In Job 23 and 12 He did esteem the word of the Lord more than his necessary provision. So provide, uh, providing provision can be like, like providing and showing the right way to walk. Right. First Samuel 24 and 11. This is 1 Samuel 24, verse 11. Moreover, my father, see, ye yeah, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and killed thee not. Know thou, now thou, and see, know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take me. Right. So the house of David does not hunt men for their souls. There we go right there. They are hunters in a sense of providing food for the soul's requisites, which King David uh, did for King Saul. So the, so, the, so the hunters, they got a whole bunch of bright burns on right. They got a bunch of bright burns, man. Right. They're a bunch of King Davids who who uh, seek mercy even in the time of when, when, when you had an uh, opportunity to, to kill. Right. You know? So you want to be a part of the house of David, you gotta uh, you can't hunt souls, man. That's not what the hunters in Jeremiah 16 and 16 are doing. They're not hunting people literally to kill them, bro. Right. 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 Uh, uh, so, so, 
the one destroying them in that city. Right, you know, it's, it's, it's like, we're, we're gonna make a whole world where the will of righteousness. Like exactly. One nation, one world under God. Right. So we pray that you were edified. Uh, you wanna give all praises to? Yahweh, 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 Peace and salutations to those that are continuing to labor to be in the spirit of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Uh, that kingdom come. That will be done. Shalom. Shalom. Hey, stop talking about hunters as actual killers, man.